So uh, last time we uh, stopped here, union of consciousness. We talk about um, uh, yeah, the Buddha mentioned the existence in union. Uh, at that moment, uh, we're in tune with uh, our Buddha nature. So union of consciousness with eyes and sign has three components as not settled. How can that which is devoid of substance be used as a means to win perfection? So the union of consciousness with eyes and sign. Mm. So that is what they call the concentration, right? That is, mm, uh, that in tune with the Buddha nature because let's say um when our eyes see something and we have um the thinking uh so there's not in union with the seeing uh or the sight uh, so that's why we have all kind of discriminative thought coming up but if we see the sight uh, and our consciousness are in uh in constant uh, movement with that side um, and this is no more uh, thinking so that's what we live with that movement um, the uh, the the pure movement of concentration that makes sense right yes that's, yes mm -hmm. yeah, the next one um Hearing, the, hearing. the hearing mind, the hearing mind which reaches into space, needs a great cause for its development. But untrained, man cannot realize it. How can this help to achieve perfection? Hmm. The hearing mind which reaches into space, right? That makes sense. Um, like, it's uh, the way it's being said here, I wouldn't, I usually wouldn't think of hearing as as actually reaching out, but is more kind of like being able to receive from far out. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more of a, it's not a, like a technical description here. It's more of just a, a way to kind of understand it. Mm. Uh, needs a great cause for its development. To me, it sounds like that saying like, we're not automatically going to contemplate or, or like we're going to practice that sort of hearing without thought or being aware of the essence of hearing there needs to be something that like drives us to do that um, but untrained men cannot realize it how can this help to achieve perfection hmm hmm So you think um, for our untrained mind, we need tremendous uh, effort to concentrate our mind, to concentrate on things we're doing, to be mindful. We need that type of um, great effort uh, to come naturally, what do you think? Yeah, I, th I think it's a, you know, it's a different sort of effort than a physical effort. Mm -hmm. Um it's it's maybe even like mindfulness i think is the right word because if we don't continually do it then it's you know we could do it all day today mm. but then if we don't do it tomorrow it's like okay well it's it's not enough to just do it one day we have to like establish ourselves in it so I think that like the effort being that like commitment over time and not being distracted, not, not going astray, but like remaining mindful of the one, the reason of why, but also like in the moment to um, be mindful when, when we're not practicing it. Mm -hmm. So depend upon our skill, right, of concentration, right? Uh, so um, if we get used of uh, focusing our mind on doing things, much easier for us to be in tune with things that we're doing, right? 
but if we have so much destruction um, for a day, so there's no way for us to focus much easy. Right, so depend upon our skill. That's why that's why my training like I do meditation or design the sutra, Buddha name and so forth. Yeah, it could um, sharpen our mind. I could refocus our mind. Otherwise um uh, I might fly everywhere, right? Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Meditation on the nose is only an experience means to control the mind by fixing it for a moment, but wrong dwelling can create illusory abode. Wow. Yeah, so um if we focus our mind on sometime, you know, in the past when it was young, I focus my mind on the tip of my nose. It's easy to concentrate. It's easy to focus on my on that, but it's so painful. It is so he much heck later on. That's why I need to move down to the solar point, most of the time solar point. Uh, so mean to control the mind by fixing is for a moment. But drawing trailing can drain an illusory abode. That's that's a problem. If we don't we don't know how to concentrate, how to control the mind. Uh if we don't well on the proper place. Uh, so like I say if we focus our mind on, on the on on this on the, what do you call it? this the forehead, right? And or on the yeah. nose. The brow or the the technical the medical term would be the labella. Yeah, it's just um, for me um it's so much headache that I need to release that energy. But it's easy. It's really easy to focus. But the side effect is that it's so much hair. That's why I move down my my move down my energy energy move my energy down to the solar point, and um, so to release that energy. Uh, like um, if we let's say if we put our finger right, uh, uh, in the middle right right here like this one here, right. And if we really focus on this for a while, it creates some kind of illusion too. Mm -hmm. right? it, mm -hmm. it focus on the right place, at the right place. That's why it's wrong. Parent can create an illusory abode. That's why when we talk about practice, we need to uh, be skillful. Yeah, otherwise, um, it's not easy. Uh, that's why um, uh, in the Practice of meditation, especially if someone do really want to grow deeper in the meditative state of mind, they need to have some kind of um, guidance from the uh, uh, from the skill master. Uh, how to train the mind? Otherwise, it's not easy. Uh, please, yeah. Uh, preaching the Dharma plays upon voice and words. But awakening occurred during practice long ago. Words and speeches never going beyond the worldly stream. How can this be a means to achieve perfection? Yeah. Yeah. So I think we, um, this makes me think of something I read a long time ago that I don't remember clearly. But it was something along the lines of like looking at like Zazen to understand Zazen, the city, the practice, and, you know, acknowledging that like if it was just about the sitting, then why don't frogs become enlightened? Mm -hmm. You know, because frogs sit there really well and they can be very still and they can wait, you know, and catch their fly. Mm -hmm. And so this is, to me, it's, it's it's kind of like that where we can we can speak and use words and use concepts and ideas and that's still we can still be it mundane so what is like what's the difference so just like in zen like what makes the sitting uh useful in realization so this this question makes sense of like well yeah i could just 
I could read any book out loud and I'm, I'm using words and sounds and ideas um, like why in, in teaching the Dharma, uh, like why would that process of, of reading uh, help to achieve perfection? Yeah, that's why that's why um, the uh, the function of residing the mantra is so wonderful. You know, right? You know the function of the of mantra restation, right? I think so. How 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 is that in your view? How is... Well, you know, even though mantras do have some meaning to them for people who understand it. Like the Sanskrit ones, I know they all have, they have meaning and I'm familiar with some of the Sanskrit words, but a lot of it I don't understand. But really in the mantra, we're not dwelling on the meaning. There is, there's a value in the sound itself. Hmm. My understanding is the, the sound itself is thought to actually um, have a, like have a positive effect on our mind state. Um, but just the act of the recitation without thought and the, the rapidity of it helps to keep us from like dwelling or thinking about things. So we're like staying in a more like thought free space. And then at the end of mantras, I always find there's like a little sense of like a vibration and a sort of clearance that makes it a little easier to like to enter into meditation practice. Uh, it's like already kind of cleared away that initial that initial kind of hump that if I just sit down to meditate, that's there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, beside that, yeah, yeah, you say publicly right, and beside that, the power of uh, the Buddha and Bodhisattva with those kind of um, secret mantra uh, is so powerful, you know. Um, the three days that I lie down in the uh, bed of the uh, ICU room, somehow, um, you know, I could even now I could not sit up by myself. But at that time, I still lie down there, and uh, at night, I uh, I recite the mantra, uh, uh, and uh, I feel I, I at that time I could not I could feel I could feel that there's some kind of blessing there. Uh, otherwise, I would not recoup um, quicker, or they may not allow me to leave early. <laughs> and then, <laughs> or, or the room and board uh, at the high, so it's, it's so expensive. Anyway, so um, with those kind of um, uh, uh, blessing from the Buddha and Bodhisattva mantra, it's generally a spiritual energy that uh, go beyond the world, right? Mm. If we just decided and listened to the sound, right? Without thinking, uh, without letting the thinking mind uh, working on that. Yeah, so, so in my life, um, I told you many times that um, I combine the mantra recitation with the management practice. It's so helpful, it's so powerful in my life. I, yeah, I encounter all kind of difficulties, accident like this one or all the problems. But um, in my feeling, you know, Buddha bless me with those kind of mantra prestation. Yeah, it's so powerful. Mm, yeah, you could feel that one. Yeah, I, I uh, used um a lot when. Like if Lisa and I had some sort of disagreement and I uh, would be like thinking about it and it's kind of hard to not, not think about it. And the mantra recitation was really good um, in that sort of setting. Cause my mind wants to be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, so I just do that, do that instead. And then on the other end, it is usually a little bit more calm. Yeah, that's that's why somehow uh, we need to put the self effort in do meditation and decide those kind of mantra, sutra, and so forth. But on the top of that, we have the faith, strong faith that the Buddha bless us to overcome some invisible 
karma that we couldn't handle by ourselves. Mm. Okay, yeah, thank you. Observance, approves the discipline, control the body, but never that which is beyond it. Uh, since control the body is not all embracing, how can this serve to achieve the perfection? Again, yeah, we can absorb the rule, we can follow the um, the rules, the discipline ourselves, uh, but mm, our body would not mm, go beyond that. As there's no way for us to achieve the perfection because it's just based on the the body. Excuse me, can you please? Mm, yeah. Mm. Ah. Yeah, so um especially in Mahaya tradition, right? Focusing on the mind is more important than the body. But of course the body has some effect to the mind. But it's second the concern to compare with the mind. Mm. If we uh discipline our body but if we don't control our mind much, it would not much use, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine we wouldn't keep disciplining our body if we if we if we weren't controlling our mind. Something eventually would would lead us astray. Yeah. Mm. Want me to start with the next part? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, since thinking from externals, oh, transcendental powers come from a former cause. How can they derive from discriminating consciousness? Since, oh, just that part goes together. Yeah. S stop at that line there or keep going. You can uh, read the next two, please. Yeah. Since thinking from externals cannot stray. How can it serve to achieve perfection? Hmm. Okay. So transcendental powers come from a former cause. That makes sense that, you know, through, um, say, purifying the mind, then transcendental powers can be achieved. So the cause would be that, that practice that purifies the mind, like living in solitude and practicing meditation a lot. Um, but they come from a former cause. So how can they derive from discriminating consciousness? I guess in this case, you know, discriminating consciousness, it's like, okay, I'm making a choice to uh, practice meditation. Like there's a there's consciousness there that you're discriminating between like this and that. I'm gonna I'm gonna practice meditation. So it's interesting that like, yeah, how can how can that because like discriminating consciousness is also just like normal everybody exercises discriminating consciousness so how can that lead to this sort of transcendental state of these powers the next part uh let me see if i can understand this since thinking from externals cannot stray since thinking from externals so i would think of externals would be like sense information and thinking is usually informed by that sense information, but I'm not sure what it, what it cannot stray. What can it not stray from, from? That's what I'm not, the thinking cannot stray. I'm not sure what that means. Hmm. Yeah, so since uh, thinking for external can kind of stray, so if we focus on an external sense, right, with the form and so forth, how can it serve to achieve perfection? There's no way. If we focus on the external things, right, there's no way, no way for us to, to achieve the perfection or the um, uh, the pure mind if we look out there. 
Well, that, that makes sense. Yeah, if we if we're focused on those sorts of thoughts, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, the transcendental power cannot um, be derived from the discriminating consciousness that at all. There's no way, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as we have that kind of discriminative thought, there's no way for us to have that kind of transformation, a transcendental power, because um, we have all kind of thinking. Uh, we uh, we have all kind of destruction, uh, all kind of um, confusion. So there's no way, no way for us to have um, transcendental power. There's no way. And if uh, we focus on the S notes, there's no way for us to achieve the perfection. There's no way. Mm. Yeah. If the elements of earth be used for contemplation, is solid and cannot be penetrated, belonging to the worry, it lacks spirituality. How can it be used to achieve perfection? So we use the element of earth to contemplate so it's solid, cannot mm, be penetrated. So it kept the earth, it kept the lake, the clay, uh, the rock. So there's no way for us to uh, achieve the uh, perfection. This is, this is like the body, right? If there's no concentration, it kept the uh, the earth, the rock, or the clay. There's no way, uh, no way for us to to have that type of profession right yeah yeah please okay sorry you froze for a moment it just kicked back in um okay if meditation be on the element of water the thoughts that then arise have no reality beyond feeling and seeing is the absolute how then can water help to achieve perfection okay if the meditation be on the element of water, the thoughts that then arise have no reality. Hmm. Yeah, I would think this would be true of kind of thoughts in one sense of like thoughts arising at any time. Mm -hmm. Could be said that they have no reality. Um, but so if we're meditating on water, the thoughts have no reality. Beyond feeling and seeing is the absolute. So when we're, when we're meditating on water, well, we could see it like how we could experience water. We could see it and we could feel it. You know, I guess if it was moving around, we could hear it as well. Um, and since the absolute is beyond seeing and feeling, then how, how could, you know, meditation on water be of any help? And, you know, the thoughts that come during that meditation have no reality. Feeling and seeing um, the absolutes beyond those. So, yeah, it's I, I, I get a sense of where it's going to, where it's kind of showing that, like how before it's just showing uh, how Ananda's like thinking. And this I know this in this case is, isn't is Ananda speaking right now? In oh. this part, it's been a little bit since we read. So I probably, uh, I forgot, probably uh, Mansuri. I don't know, I forgot. That okay. Let's go back. Yeah, Mansuri. Yeah, Mansuri. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's like, so then it's like Manjushri is just calling out all these different doubts people likely had while they were listening to the teachings where they're like, wait, but you know, these other teachings say this. So how come in this scenario? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, basically he can mention about the four elements, right? The four elements, if we focus on them, uh, actually they, they, they by themselves, there's no spirituality, but if we focus our mind on them uh, with, I mean, that, uh, without letting the feeling or the thinking or seeing uh, disturb that kind of concentration, we will get to the um, the absolute or the uh, the profession, right? That's the whole idea there, right? Mm. 
Yeah. Okay. So can we stop here today? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So um. Uh, I won't see you on Saturday, but I can. I think I can speak uh, with you on the phone to translate. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, so Sunday you come down, or you you busy on Sunday? Uh, are you talking this Sunday? Sunday. Or yeah, yeah was there something? Was that the Amitabha Buddha celebration, right? After that, we have um, yeah. Let me turn off this one here.